Ever wish you had a personal chef? Well, I wish that I had a personal chef, and no, he's not my personal chef yet, but maybe it's Chris Lavecchia. How are you? Good, how are you? Thank Good. you for having me. Well, you're my personal chef today. Yes. Because we are celebrating the 10 year anniversary yeah. of the show. And happy anniversary. Thank you so much. I we love the new set, it looks, it looks beautiful. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Um, what are you making for us tonight? So today I'm doing three things. I have penne alla vodka, okay. and then I have the little meatballs that you love. Love those. And mm -hmm. I'm doing a chicken scorpiello. Mm. And then I also have some shrimp, and then we're doing some desserts. Oh my gosh, yeah. all that? Yeah, all that. Ooh, I'm excited. I uh, brought out, uh, no stops. No stops. No stops. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, you know, but the best for the Drake, right? That's you. Yeah, oh, you guys are crazy. Um, but we are, we are here, and we are having a wonderful time together. I got to meet you, and that's what happened. I tasted one of the meatballs that you had at one of these events, mm -hmm. and I was like, Chris, this is really good. And we became friends, mm -hmm. um, and then you broke your hand. Yeah. And I had to wait for your hand to get better. Not the best injury to have as a chef. Oh my, I was really was, worried. It was quite challenging for the first couple of weeks. And then after two weeks, I kind of just worked through it. But the first two weeks was the toughest. And, uh, now, how did you train? How did you become a personal chef? So I was always into food. I grew up in an Italian household. You know, Sundays were and, and uh, holidays were all about family getting together. And I would help my mom cook. I would help my grandmother cook. And I just always liked food. And, and every job I've always had since I'm a teenager was always in something with hospitality, either okay. entertainment side or production side or the cooking side. And I've done everything uh, full circle as far as events go. And um, as I got older, I, I kind of just got into it. One day um, while I was in college on one of those gap years, I got a thing in the mail for the Culinary Academy. And I was still living at home at the time. and My mom showed it to me. And uh, she showed me the brochure and she said, hey, you know, you always like to cook. Why don't you give it a try? Because I was still at that time where, you know, you don't know what you want to do and kind of in between a couple of different things. So um, I took a tour of the school, liked it. And, you know, 900 hours later, I became a wow, you know, professional chef. Wow, that's how long chef. it takes to be yeah. a chef? Well, it was, it, some of them are two years. Mine okay. was one year with an internship. Um, and then I kind of was already in the events and then I was doing a lot of freelance stuff. I was working for catering companies. I was working, I did a lot of uh, corporate catering. And then I was working in restaurants. Um, and then, so that was in 2005, I went to culinary school. So I've been almost 15 years now. I've Lovely. been a professional chef. What is your, for the um, chef at home, mm -hmm. or the cook at home, I should yeah. say, um, how important is it to have a really nice pot and pan set? You know, yes. people spend a lot of money. So without naming any brands, are there certain qualities? Is it a gauge of stainless steel that well, somebody should have? Here's or reduction the thing. A lot, of, or? a lot of people think that you need these big, expensive pots and pans. Okay. And you really don't. Even the ones I do are probably the cheapest pans. Really? But they're either stainless steel or aluminum. And, but they and what the should you look for? What should somebody look for in I a I mean, a pan? solid, sturdy pan. You know, nothing that's going to buckle in the heat or, I mean... Um, it depends on what you're cooking on too. If you want gas, if you're cooking on gas, you want a nice um, pan that can handle high heat. And then the induction ones, they make specific pans for that, which can you know handle that. And those are you know nice stainless steel is good. Do you have a preference? I I personally, because I think I grew up with it, I like cooking on gas because I can kind of see the temperature. I I and love cooking on gas. Like okay. At home, I have an electric stove and I hate it. You do. Yeah. Well, can't you get home. a new stove? I mean, here. Chris Lavecchia. <laughs> Can't you get like a well, chef? Usually, like a like stove sometimes company, when like, I'm cooking, I'll bring in right. my butane ones. Okay. But um, I prefer gas, yeah. I know. You, know. you get that perfect sear that you want, and you know you cook faster. But induction is it's come a long way. I mean, some of them you have, I mean, you can boil water in like 30 seconds or less. Oh, let's so, see I mean, that they get, for the convenience. They get pretty hot. And um, what's good about them is the safety feature on it is, you know, you have kids or whatever, you know, they... Um, they cool down right away. So they do. electric, you know, if you're cooking uh, rice or something, it's easy to burn it because even when you turn it off, it stays hot for however, whereas the induction, it kind of cools down pretty quickly. So it, those are good. And because, you know, I, lo I do love my sweets. Mm -hmm. So um, in closing um, of our segment, um, can you tell me what the dessert is tonight? Yeah, so I have uh, some petit fours, which okay. are French, little French pastries. Yes. And then I have assorted macaroons. So. Lovely, lovely. And yeah. I just did 23andMe, and I found out that not only am I Italian, but I'm also French. 
Well, it's always great to have you here and thank you very, very much. Uh, and people me, yeah. can always go to your website. They can, you know, hire you, engage with you. you you'll yeah. do parties or so, yeah, private so, dinner parties. Yeah. So I, I specialize in the small intimate dinner parties, okay. even for two. It starts with a dinner for two. Lovely. And it kind of goes up from there, however many their dining room can hold. And then I do larger cocktail parties. So I do a lot of, you know, birthdays, anniversaries. Um, I do a lot of bridal shows. So I do a lot of engagement parties and rehearsal dinners and bachelorette parties. Um, you know, I'll go out to the Hamptons and Montauk over the summer. Um, or even LA, if somebody calls you and if, says, yeah, fly out, I mean, you I go, love right? to travel. For yeah. award dinners. Yeah, just pay for my airfare and my hotel, and I'm there. There you go. But, uh, yeah, I and and your one tra- sturdy, inexpensive pan. Yeah. That's yeah, all you just need. Just give me good pots and pans and a gas stove. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll, <laughs> I'll make whatever. Lovely. Yeah. Are you having a good time here today? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Meet some new people? Yeah. Yeah. A lot it's of great fun. people here. Yeah. We a lot of people out back and yeah, you got some nice people here today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So we're going to have a good time later on too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and we hope you at home, my grandfather was a chef. So, uh, shout out to, um, both of my grandfathers actually, uh, to Rennie and, uh, to my grandpa George. So stay tuned for more. We've been having a great time today and we always thank you for watching.